Hello and welcome to Boom In Your Face, a platform for indie artists and musicians to come and share their new music or projects, as well as discuss topics about the music industry and the community at large. Boom In Your Face has two meanings. One is that boom in your face from the music that you're listening to, but the other boom in your face is when someone assumes the situation is one way and boom in your face is totally wrong and something totally different. So on occasion, we discuss those boom in your face moments, so watch out that someone might be you. Listeners, if you'd like to share your boom in your face music or projects, or share your boom in your face moments, or just want to join us in the conversation, reach out and email me at boominyourface616 at gmail.com, or visit the website and sign up for the newsletter, like, subscribe, and share the episodes. I'm your host, Mary Kearney. Welcome. Today we're talking about the hard reality of race relations and the police brutality that's been going on in America and how it has been affecting everyone watching and I guess the imagery that's been going on and what solutions can we come up with to bridge the gap from chaos to peace. I am Doreen Lundy. I'm Jessica Green. I would say it personally affects me because I have um, a 12 year old African American son. And to see that George Floyd was um, screaming, you know, taken away from here from force. Um, Come back to me. I'm Jessica Kearney, uh, known as Jada Sound. Um, really, it it hurt to watch. Like it, it hurt to see something like that happen. You know, because it happens so much, and to the point where it's like, when is it gonna stop? When when is it going to change? And the fact that that man had no remorse on his face while doing this. Right. Adds to the fact that it's traumatizing. It's 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 a horrible thing to witness. Are you ready to express yourself, Dorian? Yes, I I am. I got my thoughts. Um just piggyback on from what Jessica said to see it. Um it brought more than tears. I was very, very emotional because it's not the first time that we have seen um a black man or a woman be taken by the police in the hands of the police. Um, and it was just heart wrenching um, because I had to have a conversation with my 12 year old. We always have, yes, plenty of conversations of why this is happening, um, what happened, why people are protesting, um, <laughs> why are you always having to do something different, you know, you being having to defend yourself all the time and, you know, just not feeling like you're um, equally um, judged. Um, you always have to explain yourself. So um, that's, I guess, how it touched me. I, I was very emotional. I'm trying not to get too heavily embedded, but it does affect all of us. And it, it is it's very it tragic. Does. But going through this, you know, in 2020, it's really, it's, it's heartbreaking. Even to see what's going on now with the protesting, the looting, the riots, people still dying. It's really a dangerous song. Dangerous. It's, it's scary. Is it? Anytime you, we have to have the conversation with our children, again, just general things. Even when they start driving, my brothers. Okay. Okay, when you get pulled over, you need to pull your license out, you know, put, put your hands on the steering wheel, turn off your music, turn your keys, you know, all these protocols that Caucasian people might not be having these type of conversations with their children. You know what I'm saying? The second, is it like a double, is a double, rule. not a double standard, but. It's a double rule. It's a different, yeah, exactly. So we could be safe 
and precautions, every little thing. This in general as how we're seen in America. If I raise my voice and I'm talking sternly like this, then I'm angry. I'm mad. No, I'm just assertive. I'm probably passionate about what I'm talking about. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm upset or, you know, I'm frustrated because we always have to do things extra and always walking on a fine line. Like, you know, eight, eight, shows, eight shows in America. That's how I feel as an African American woman. I guess you notice that it is, or you feel that you have a feeling and understanding that there's a different set of restrictions, rules, and regulations all your life. You really notice the difference. Rules and restrictions, absolutely. Rules and restrictions. There's this different set of rules, and it's, it's like I said, it's, it's just sad. It is very, very sad. Well, what do you say in your generation what can be done, or how do we bridge this gap? What do you have to say to your peers, what do you say that's going to be relatable? Right. Yeah. That's that's a hard thing yeah. to do. It it's is a very hard topic. Like it is. For for me personally, it still takes a lot for me to understand why this is and why this happens and what the reasons are behind it because it doesn't make sense. It's it's just senseless violence and then to have more people be violent in that or to take part in doing something to disrupt the peace of the protest and causing more problems than solving them is just right it's a cycle and and at some point something has to change something has to give but as far as like my peers i know a lot of them are out protesting peacefully and trying to express themselves and be open with how they feel as well but at the same time i feel like because all of this is being brought up in a time where things are very stressful and a lot of people don't have money and don't have jobs and everything is just kind of going downhill, I think a lot of the discussions that I see my peers having is about mental health and mm. how to cope with these things and to deal with these things and to get through them. Mm -hmm. I agree the imagery is so powerful. The society as a whole is dealing with PTSD. But especially in the black community, because you live this reality your entire life. And then now you can keep seeing the disregard, the disrespect, the inconsideration of our lives across the globe. Is that, absolutely, yeah. yeah. That you have these little subtle, subtle movements, subtle undertones of racism. Mm -hmm. That... We live every day, so when we do get upset, angry, outraged. Right, because we almost do at a breaking point at that point, you know. You know, because when it's addressed as if we are not conducting ourselves as society tell us that socially acceptable behavior. If you're angry and you're lashing out, you're, it's just like we've had a, enough. Enough is enough. When is it enough? When is it enough? Like I said, every day is something going on. This hasn't just started and is now being recorded. So now we're seeing it. So it's like, okay, we know this has been going on for how many hundreds of years? What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it to, to, to change the, um, the way, the cycle, breaking the cycle? Yes. You know, right. It's not just our community among ourselves who can solve. We have to bridge this. Right. So that way we can get everyone in the room and let's just really start breaking that. We have to come up with measures to heal this. Now we always have the people that are activated when things like this happen, but how are we going to get these things to be still the same? adrenaline the same push through people and keep it in their conscious when the cameras are not shining because this is everyday life we are dealing with we're gonna have to solve this with godly love not with um ridicule and you know joking no i've seen mockery you right. know mm -hmm. already dealing with the pandemic absolutely so this is already, uh, 
virus acts and people who have to send they don't even worry about getting virus. It's like it hasn't even been right. Nope, it's just like it hasn't even it, it going on. I don't even hear them talking about it. Like you know how right. they work. Like the 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 mm-hmm. exactly. But that's a whole other thing. Exactly. On a yes, add it to. We are going to need to have a lot of police training and the community training too. And some real open discussion with people honestly talking with each other, not just at each other, but really taking in both perspectives. Well, Jessica, this is the world you're inheriting in this being the first few months out of college. How do you feel you've been affected? What do you see? Yeah, the world kind of just stopped after I graduated. Like everything was just paused. Feels like, Jessica, I feel like that's the, you know, I'm saying like being able to travel and to go about, I mean, we do, but now we walk, well, we, we're in a health yes. crisis. So we're After walking around with exactly. masks, you know, and, and sitting and, you know, staying six feet away from each other and just doing yes. all the precautionary things, just not a normal way of being. I mean, it's just, it's, they're very different. Unfortunate norm, yes. Correct. Norm, yes, that we're having to accept this year. I mean, 2020, it won't be in March, you know, the beginning. Correct. So. Well, this is the conversation I'm going to continue to have and bring more people into the conversation. But I want people that really want to voice their view, that really want to speak life into the situation and empower others. How are we going to move forward? Reach out. Email me at boominyourface616 at gmail.com. Visit the website or even all about entertainment156 at gmail.com. So we can get the word out about how you're feeling and tell your story. We have millions of protesters out there, and I I want to hear from you all. How you feel on the street, what are your thoughts, what are your dreams, what's your aspirations that's going to come from all of your... um, activities and your activism where do you see us moving forward and the steps you feel we need to take as a community to move forward well how did you um think it personally affected you um the way this has personally affected me is because i was born into the world right after segregation and i used to see how the separation was happening, but it didn't resonate on, on why it was going the way it did. Now that I reflect back, yes, I could see, you know, why my mother was placing me a certain way when I would go places, when we get on the bus, how we would sit a certain area. Even though segregation was over, she still, I guess, was coming out of life that used to be her norm. But she never made me feel that everything wasn't possible in the world. She still gave me all the hopes and dreams of becoming the greatest and the best at anything you desired and worked for. And I appreciate her and my grandmother for really doing that to me because they gave me a no holds bar on my dreams and aspirations of life and to want anything. It wasn't no hindrance on what I was able to achieve as long as I was willing to work and educate myself in order to get it. So I feel in about the same of any difference, even though I was protected a lot because that's what my parents do. Mm-hmm. And I used to go there and sit at that uh, account. I didn't, I didn't know. know I was a child. I'm still mm-hmm. there. I don't want to Well, again, I say that um, I was protected by my mother and grandmother, and they did an excellent job of protecting me from the reality of what really was going on around us, because it was unfair, unjust, and dangerous, really, especially a lot of the places we was traveling to, because we were coming from out the city, going to the south, and 
that's where everything deeply was really embedded. Even to the day, you still have that you go too deep in the South. But well, now that I play it back in my memory, I can see the different sentiments my mother had on trying to keep me in a certain area, trying to have me sit and speak a certain way, you know, just so we would blend in and not be the odd one out, even though we were. Because at the time, in a lot of places, my mother took me, it was just us as an African American. Um, but I appreciate the experiences because it taught me how to live in the world regardless to whatever the situation or scenario was. Right. But to go from that to come these many decades later and still feel the same kind of feeling when I go into a restaurant and I'm spending the same money even more most of the time. Probably exactly, yeah, yes. But, but you don't feel you being appreciated or accepted or welcomed the same way. Right. Unless you have, of course, a celebrity name, fame, or they know you're big in some way. Right. But that shouldn't be. Absolutely not. But at the same time, I say I give it to my face. And to my upbringing, to still love regardless. Right. But everybody doesn't have that. Or even the same man. Mm -hmm. That no matter what, we are still all connected. Absolutely, we are. So you, being the oldest, your reaction to what's going on from coming from the north, moving to the south, because that's the thing too. Yeah. Because, I mean, me being in the South is totally different than when I lived in the North. Yeah. Um, this um story keeps popping in my head back to middle school. Um, mm -hmm. going from the north to the to the south. Right. And this is a question that came about and I answered um earlier. They said, What was the first um time you ever I mean this is changing the topic, but first time you ever experienced um racism, I guess. Or or I I, that you I'm sorry. Oh, okay, well, I identified that you um, felt that you were being treated differently. Mm -hmm. And I guess the first time that I ever felt different was in middle school. Um, I think it was, it was either, I think it was seventh grade, sixth or seventh grade in my social studies class. I remember like it was yesterday. And Mr. Jameson, I would never forget. Mr. Jameson was a social studies teacher. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there. Um, well, I should have been talking during his lesson, which I was. <laughs> and he yelled out in front of everybody in the class, a predominantly um, white school I was in, um, mixed, but I was a minority. And he told me, do not talk Ebonics in his class to get out. And he sat my desk outside, told me I could not come back in. My, you remember? Well, you, I okay, I'm sorry. Sorry. We don't we don't want to Right. He told me don't speak. I was speaking Ebonics in his class, mm -hmm. which I was not. First right. of all, it was really that but I'm like, what are you but doing? Ebonics, you were a teacher. Is what, exactly. is what I've been, you know, was raised and taught. So I didn't even, that was like foreign language to me when he said Ebonics. I never even heard the term. That, exactly. term. So I, I'm like, what is that? My mom and my, my mom and my dad. I had to come up to the school and have a big conference, but that was my first experience of me feeling like, "Wow, I'm different." I'm I'm different. Yes, in your eyes, in my eyes, yes, not in my your eyes, eyes. In Mr. Jameson's eyes, because he knew you I'm didn't know that you were different. different. Of right. course, you right. have you're not African American, but you're not different. Right, but ever since you know, then it just make you. It made you look at things more, pay attention a little more. Like, okay, by being, you know, different teachers, you know, just going through school at that time, being singled out for different things. And just, like I said, from the North to the South, it was very different being treated. I mean, it wasn't a Southern hospitality, a welcome a red carpet coming down to Virginia at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, it was definitely adaptable. I mean, you learn, you know, it was diverse here. So mm -hmm. I learned how to adapt. and. Um, and try to brush those kind of situations under the rug. 
it's yeah. I have so many stories, but yes, absolutely mm-hmm. to brush those things off and just keep moving. Like, oh, okay, this is I should accept this. This is how life is. I mean, right. yeah, our norm. What you have a story? Jada sounds Jessica. I'm sorry. I'm telling Jessica, no, you did sing. So, you oh. know, that's something you know. Nice. Yo, the first time you ever felt different, I'm saying, it's being treated in a. As a I like yeah. In my experience, uh, even like, even being in predominantly black schools, I still <laughs> felt out of place. Like, I, I, I've never felt comfortable around certain people like I've never felt comfortable around anybody being in school even when I was in the predominantly black school I was isolated into myself and then even in the predominantly white school I was isolated into myself so I always kind of felt different from everybody because it was never like I fit in anywhere Uh, so Mm -hmm. I'm on Mm -hmm. okay see and that's a dynamic because you look at Jessica and, and you saying, okay, who are you? What do you think? On both sides of the fence, so you have it there. So that's right. kind of the same taste in people's minds that is perpetuating throughout society and their dress. And really mm-hmm. try to clothe that ignorance. Absolutely. Right. About Perceiving people differently because of whatever background they have. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Your lives are different. Your way you raise are different. Your environments are different. Correct. Um, you know, so you shouldn't be treated any differently of, of the obvious, but right. Or be open to learn. Um, right. 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 Mm-hmm. All right. Well, this is the way part of one of the topics. We're going to leave right here. We're going to pick it up. But for now, we're going to sound out. All right. Listeners, I want to thank you again for joining me for another episode of Booming Your Face. Please remember to support the podcast on the website. As a reminder, if you'd like to share your Booming Your Face music or share your Booming Your Face moments or just want to join in the conversation, reach out and email me at boomingyourface616 at gmail or visit the website and sign up for the newsletter and share your stories. I'm your host, Mary Kearney. Be blessed.